and at the end we are going to apply it. Applied mathematics, can I hear the engineers screaming? Oh, they scream full of joy. Oh. I mean the J's are just going to die. Okay, Jens, the mathematical meme guy is going to die. Oh. This is really sad, to be honest. A huge thanks to my Patreon supporters for making this episode possible. Einen wunderschönen guten Morgen, willkommen zurück zu einem neuen Video. Today we would like to talk about <laughs> so weird switching between German and English in like the same sentence. Never mind, today we would like to talk about a certain integration technique I kind of came up with myself um, a bunch of years ago while solving a certain class of trigonometric integrals. And I would like to show it to you today. It's kind of spicy. At first some theory, a certain end result and at the end we are going to Apply it. Applied mathematics. Can I hear the engineers screaming? Oh, they scream full of joy. Oh, I can hear the voices of the engineers screaming. Oh, application sounds so good. <laughs> and at the end, we are going to apply it to a certain integral. Okay, so it's a whole class of integrals that is going to come out on the other side that we can solve using this integration technique. It's called integration using a system of equations and I have actually introduced it before on my blog Mathable, formerly papaflemmy.engineer, but um, I have kind of discontinued it at this point. And now we are going to dive right in, I hope you are going to enjoy this video and now we are going to start. So at first I would like to place a few conditions on those weird functions that we are having here, f, g and h. I mean, they are just randomly there and we are basically going to deal later with an integral of this kind which is a quotient of let's say um, could be polynomials maybe we don't know yet or maybe other transcendental functions. So at first I want f and g to be differentiable on the interval a b. This is definitely a condition that needs to apply. So we want f and g to be differentiable on the interval a b. And also there's another condition I would like to place on our function f for now. I want the differential of f to be equal to h. Okay, this is it for now. We don't need anything more at the moment. Now we are going to introduce another integral which is going to be part of the system of equations that we are going to solve. Namely we are going to um, get ourselves let's say j okay for Jens the mathematical meme guy here at YouTube and we are going to define it on the same interval from a to b but this time we are going to say it's not h over f plus g we are going to say this is some function i of x over f of x plus g of x. Maybe you can already see where all of this is going. We are going to have the same interval integrating over the same interval and with the same denominator here. Now I would like to place another condition on i. i is going to be the differential of g in some way but we would like to elaborate the time a little bit further. We would like to take a look at i plus h. We are going to place the condition on i plus h that it is equal to f plus g. This is something that we definitely need here. So just keep in mind if we have i plus h we are going to get f plus g out on the other side. Also I would like to take the differential of f plus g. Okay we are going to take the differential of f plus g. Now we can just make use of the linearity of the differential operator here to say this is just the differential of f plus the differential of g. But what I want to get out on the other side is okay differential of f is definitely going to give us h by this condition and the, the differential of g we want it to be negative i. Okay this is something really important. We are going to differentiate both sides here or at least f plus g and we are going to get h minus i out on the other side. Let's put it like this. Okay we got a bit of theory done and now we are going to get to the linear algebra part here. At first I would like to add i and j together. Now what is going to happen if we were to add i and j together? Well on the one hand we are just going to add those two integrals together but on the other hand you might notice that we are integrating over the same interval meaning by the area interpretation of the integral we can just put it together into one integral overall going from a to b. Then you might notice that we are going to have the same denominator on both parts meaning we can add a fraction together which is exactly f plus g down here in the denominator. And now what are we going to get up here in the numerator? Well it's just going to be h plus i. 
hey, this is pretty good, right? I mean, we have placed a certain condition on this whole um, integrand here, namely that i plus h is hence nothing but f plus g. Meaning, we can turn this part up here in the numerator into f plus g, and this is f plus g over f plus g, leaving us with an integrator from a to b, dx. And this is really hard to solve if you ask me. This is just going to be b minus a overall. I mean you can hopefully see this. This is just going to be x over a from a to b which is b minus a. Okay so we got i plus j done. Now what about maybe i minus j? I mean we want to solve for i at the end. Meaning if we were to get ourselves a second equation namely i minus g we could add those two together and eliminate j in the process. Now let's go for i minus j. Now yet again we are going to kind of add those two together. We are going to get an integral from a to b. Also we are going to have the same denominator f plus g but this time we are going to have mm, okay this time we have h minus i integrate with respect to x. This is this is not so sweet right? I mean h minus i it's not exactly f plus g but <gasps> dead. Oh, thank you for preparing us for this glory moment. We know that h minus i is nothing but the differential of f plus g. How does this exactly help us? Well, I tell you how. We are going to introduce a tiny little substitution here. Namely, we are going to say, let our denominator f plus h, uh, f plus g, I'm terribly sorry, be equal to some uh, function t, okay? Let's just call it t. Now we are simply going to differentiate both sides, implicit differentiation, just like we always do, meaning we are going to take the differential of f plus g dx, basically, okay? But you guys know what this is. If we were to differentiate f plus g, we are going to get h minus i out on the other side. So this is nothing but h minus i dx, and this is nothing but, well, dt on the other side. Ha! Ah, this is a nice and spicy substitution that we are having here. So if we were to introduce this, we are going to get an integral from, hmm, okay, from a to b, no, not anymore. We have introduced some um, new parameter t. So we just need to put our a and our b into f and g. We are just going to evaluate the function at those certain spots. Meaning this is nothing but f of a plus g of a up until f of b plus g of b. Okay, and other than that, well, what is going to be left? I mean, this is what we are having up here in the numerator. We are going to substitute it by dt, just as always with substitution, and we are going to divide it by hmm, f plus g. Well, this is nothing but our t. And this is really easy to evaluate. This right here is just a natural log evaluated from, well, f of a plus g of a up until f of b plus g of b. Meaning overall, in this whole process, hello kitty caddies, we are going to get i minus j is hence nothing but the logarithm of, well, in our case t, really doesn't matter, from our lower up until the upper bounds. I'm not going to write it out, okay? We are just going to put stuff in. Meaning this right here is at first the natural log of, if we were to put the upper bound into here, f of b plus g of b, and then minus the natural log of, and well, the same spiel just with an a here. So f of a plus g of a. Ah, this is not even half bad because, well, this is just a difference of logarithms, meaning this is nothing but natural log of f of b plus g of b divided by the other argument that we are having here. So overall, i minus j is going to evaluate to the logarithm of f of b plus g of b over f of a plus g of a. Hey, it's pretty good. I mean, we have solved two equations, i plus j and i minus j and now we can add those two together. If we were to add equation one and two together we are going to get on the one hand i plus j plus i minus j. I mean the j's are just going to die. Okay Jens the mathematical meme guy is going to die. This is really sad to be honest. But other than that we are going to get 2i out on the other side. Okay, so that means 2i is hence nothing but, well, the value of this equation, okay, b minus a, and then plus, hmm, other than that, the value of i minus j, which was nothing but the logarithm of blah blah blah. So this is plus the logarithm of f of b plus g of b, 
divided by f of a plus g of a. And this is what we are going to get. Now to solve finally for our integral i, we are just going to divide both sides by 2, leaving us with b minus a plus the logarithm of blah 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 over 2 as the answer to our integral i. Meaning, this weird, horrible expression under the right conditions is going to vary a2, what we are going to have here. But how is this helpful? Well, let us find out a few functions that satisfy, so f and g, that satisfy our relationship that we are going to have here, find certain upper and lower bounds, and then we are going to evaluate it using what we are having up here. Meaning, we are going to say, we are going to have a certain integral i from, and now we are going to make use of trigonometric functions, okay? I'm just going to tell you, let's say, from 0 to pi over 2, off. Now we are going to get ourselves some f and g and we are going to see if our conditions hold. Let us say, let us propose that we are going to have a function f being equal to the cosine of x. Okay, now what is the differential of cosine of x? Well, our differential of cosine of x is going to be negative sine of x. And negative sine of x by this condition is exactly our h. Okay, this is our h. Now we are going to get ourselves another trigonometric function. Let's say g is nothing but, um, let's say, the sine of x. Okay, and thus we are already pretty much done. So now keep in mind, what we are having is h being equal to negative sine of x. We are going to have that f is the cosine of x and we are going to have that g is nothing but the sine of x. Meaning our integrand is going to be negative sine of x over sine plus the cosine. Okay, or cosine plus the sine. Meaning this is negative the sine of x, let's bring the negative to the front, divided by the cosine of x plus the sine of x. And this integral is kind of hard to evaluate if you don't know about this, but this was the integral that originally was on my mind when, without the negative sign, when evaluating um, integrals of this kind. And now we can just plug what we have here into our formula and then we are done. So what is b minus a? So upper bound minus lower bound is going to be, well, pi over 2 minus zero is just going to be pi over two. Don't forget your negative sign of raw. So negative pi over two over two is going to give us pi over four. And then we are going to get plus the logarithm and all of this over two, so one half of. Now we are going to have f of b. f was exactly our cosine. So we are going to get the cosine of pi over two plus the sine of pi over 2 divided by f of a plus g of a. So this is the cosine of 0 plus the sine of 0. Okay, this was a bunch of work, but it's really easy to evaluate now. You might notice that, okay, sine of 0 is nothing but 0, and we have that the cosine of pi over 2 is nothing but 0. Our sine of pi over 2 is, if we go upwards, 1, and cosine of 0 is 1, meaning we're going to get 1 over 1, and the logarithm of 1 is nothing but 0, meaning the value of our integral is hence nothing but negative pi over 4. And this does it. I mean, isn't that cool? I mean, this formula here isn't too hard to remember. I mean, what you have is just upper and lower bounds and a bit of logarithm action going on with the upper and lower bounds evaluated on those um, functions that we're having here. But this basically concludes the video. I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, like, subscribe, recommend, share, and like. Don't forget to go over to Flamble Maps 2 and subscribe there for way more calculus content and stuff like this. We are doing um, JoJo poses over there. No, we are actually doing, um, yeah, simple calculus over there, linear functions right now. We are pretty deep into the series already. And other than that, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to check out the merch 57 Best Prime. And until the next video, I'll see you guys a Flamble Day. Cheer out.